recording in progress. All right, we are called to order. Take it away. Call to order and welcome everyone. We're so glad you're all here to um, uh, share. And I, we hope you were able to read over the documents and the Excel spreadsheet. And um, Kathy and I will be more or less leading the meeting with Dave's guidance. And um, we've already received some questions that we were going to go through with you all. And um, we're ready to take any questions you may have or any um, uh, wonderments or what whatever you may be concerns that you may be thinking. So, um, Kathy, or, well, let me start it like this. As you all read over the, uh, uh, the itinerary, um, how did that all sit with you? Jerry say no. I just said no. I'm sorry. I didn't read it. That that's okay. There's still time. It looked very thorough. I just, you know, hopefully it's not too busy. You, you know, um, that's that's something that I was really concerned with, Mike, because there was a, another tour that that was just so crammed that mm -hmm. uh, I just realized there would be no time. But uh, with this tour, it actually, even though it looks full, it's a lot less than some of the other tours that I've seen. And we're well aware that we want time to be able to uh, just be as well. There is some uh, availability or options for us even uh, on the fly to be able to just say, hey, you know, we want to spend more time here and we're going to alter that. So we can do some of that if if the need arises. But as we talk through it with, uh, with the tour, Rajai, his name is, um, he also wants to make sure that we have time to just be able to be and have a spiritual experience as well. So we're aware of that. And we're working on it. Excellent. Thank you for that answer. And I'm sure that's a concern that some people may have as they read over that tour guide. But um, yeah, we, we've addressed that. And we do have the option to take more time if we need to. So our tour guide, Rajai, is very open to any um, tweakings or changes we may need to make even at the last minute. So cool. And, and if I could just jump in one more time. One of the things that that I, I made me a lot more comfortable with this tour was that um, Nina was introduced to Rajai, who is a an Arab Christian who lives in Jordan, I believe. At least he was speaking to us. Nazareth. Before. What's that? He lives in Nazareth. He lives in Nazareth. Okay, he was in Jordan when he was speaking to us. Um, anyway, he uh, is is very interested in being able to bring the Holy Land alive from a from a spiritual point of view. And I got very, I, I was just really glad to see his personality, the way he approached things and the willingness he was to, to work with us. And, uh, and I think Nina was introduced to him through one of her relatives who also lives in the West Bank, probably in Ramallah. And so there was a connection there. And as we started talking to him, the things started to come, uh, make more sense and come together in a way that felt uh, just kind of organic. I liked it. And yes. so and the more we talked to him, the more we felt comfortable that that what he is trying to bring uh, is in alignment with what we're trying to receive. And so it would seem to be working out pretty well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Th thank you, Dave. That That's so true. Even just as a, a last thought on that, today he sent the three of us a picture of the sunset over the Dead Sea. And it was just absolutely beautiful in its stillness and, and the warmth and the beauty that came through um, on that picture. So, uh, yes, we definitely feel a, a kinship and a, um, a reason of, for being and purpose through all this. So we're very grateful. Yeah. So. Another thing that I did was a really good friend of mine who is from Israel and has been in this country for about 15 years. Lorendi and Mark know him well, too. Zev Wexler, um, he uh, I, I ran the itinerary by behind by him as well as uh, he, even though he hasn't been there for 15 years, he loves his country and sees himself as an ambassador. And so he we went through item by item the uh, uh, what the uh, itinerary contained, and he kind of questioned certain things, and I brought those up to Raji, and we made a few adjustments based on that. Um, but we've been looking at that itinerary and wanting to keep it. Um, full enough that we're seeing everything that we want to see uh, in a once in a lifetime trip to Israel, most likely, but not so full that we're just running from 
from place to place and not having time yeah. to really um, just be there. And uh, when we, I realized we we're going to have two days in the old city of Jerusalem, then I started to relax a little bit more because I really wanted time to just be able to be there. And then a third day where we're outside at the uh, the environs around Jerusalem. So I think it's a pretty good itinerary from what I can tell right now. <laughs> what is the um, cutoff date for the deposit? Is well, that again? Did you hear me? Your... No, not real well. Okay. I, I was asking, is there a cutoff date? I mean, if somebody, let's say in January, said, I want to go. I mean, are we keeping it open or are we closing it at some point? Well, I think one of the things we have um, we have to do, one of the things that we're trying to determine is if, if the group, it's preferred that the group fly together on this one flight that's direct from LAX to Tel Aviv. So if those that want to do that, um, and we're hoping that will be most of us, at least from the West Coast, um, that we need to know that answer sooner than later because the booking, believe it or not, actually has to be, the group booking has to be done quicker. That's the first thing that has to be done. And Rajahi is actually waiting for us for that headcount number. For the booking on that so that will be one of the first things we would do and that would be 150 dollars from everybody that would be flying on that group flight together so he can that's a booking fee that he would have to charge us and then shortly after that we have the 300 dollars non-refundable fee just for the tour in itself and so that um that will go to rajahi as well i think sometime shortly after so um Yes, and we were thinking that we'd like to um, have a Friday, June 1st, even as a, a, a beginning of people paying for the 150 airfare. Um, but the longer we wait, they, we run the risk of losing the rate that we have for being able to fly as a group uh, and reserving all these seats. So we're hoping that whoever is planning to fly with us as a group could send $150 maybe in check or uh, and you could make it out to the effect church. We're going to um, have an account that the money, we're gonna be wiring the money directly over to Raja E. So then at that point he can purchase as many seats as people um, uh, as, as who puts their money down. Of course, people, you don't all have to fly. We don't have to fly as a group. But the wonderful thing about this particular offer is it leaves from LAX and it goes straight to Tel Aviv nonstop. It's a 14 hour flight. And, and the wonderful thing is your luggage won't get lost because we're not going to stop in Belgium or Pakistan or any place else. Um, and the other thing is that's pretty cool is if you want to, um, upgrade your seat to premium or business class, you can do that. But for right now, we're just gonna need the $150 deposit per person who's gonna be flying in the group with us. And the dates that we were leaving is on the leaving on May 6th and returning on May 17th. So uh, what, air, what airline is that? LL. What is it? L L, L L E L A L A L A L E L A L. It's L L. The Israel airline. Correct. Does that hundred and fifty dollars go toward the ticket? The price of the ticket? Um, I would imagine that it does. I believe it does. Uh, we'll we'll double check on that. I'm sure it probably is. He's called it a booking fee, so I think it goes towards the ticket. Okay. But the three hundred dollars goes toward him. That goes towards the our tour. tour. That's feeding correct. our tour guide. Okay, yeah, and, putting it together. Yeah. And that's just to be clear. That's a non-refundable. You know, that's that's your commitment saying you want to go. You're you're gonna go. It's a three hundred dollar non-refundable. So if something happens later down the road, that's three hundred dollars you wouldn't get back from the whole. And when do we have to have that? The rest of the money. So the rest of the money, it sounds like we won't have to have until probably upwards of like a month or so before the trip. 
So okay. if there's anything that we need to get sooner from the airline um, money, we need to confirm that with Rajahi. That's the only thing that's the question mark that we still have a question on. One thing that would be helpful is to find out, because um, this looks pretty good, is to find out, okay, what is our hard, what are the hard dates that we have to have and how much money for deciding whether we're doing business or whatever, business class or regular economy. So if that's possible to get, I think that would be really helpful, at least for Lorimi and I. Yeah, so one of the things, Mark, that Rajahi told us that he wanted to get the headcount first of everybody that was on the group flight. And then those that are interested in like a premium economy seat or a business class, I think he wants to work with you offline so that he can, there's special conditions with each of those seats. And so he has to work with each of those individuals offline to get those upgrades. But he mm -hmm. he's not going to take a, he's not going to do it all now. He's going to initially get the head count for the numbers of heads we need on the flight first. And then those people that say, I really like to fly premium economy or business class, he'll work with us then on the side of how that, okay. how those upgrades work, which is a little, still, still a little bit of a mystery for me too, but. No, and that's fine. Um, and then, so like, for example, for the, um, you know, for your guys, all the effort that you're putting in, what are the dates that we need that we would need to have the the you know money to you guys? Okay. Well, we could map out our schedule. I think Nina, we probably have to work with uh, Rajahi on that. He seems kind of casual about that. Of just oh, I just need the money for you know this and that. But let's get mm -hmm. a schedule so we can tell everybody specifically. Okay. We'll work on that. We'll try to make it as late as possible. And, and we'll try to make the collection of the well, money as late as possible. Great. So in case we get more people, because we will be purchasing a block of tickets, so. The other good thing about being all together on the same flight is the ground transportation um, to and from the airport. So if we all arrive together, then the bus, uh, the coach will come and pick us up at Ben Gurion and take us directly to Nazareth and then from Jerusalem back to uh, Tel Aviv. And so it makes things easy. If uh, if we're kind of arriving scattered, then um, then transportation is going to be up to the individual. So, and with that said, Dave, we have a couple of outliers too, like you know Mary, and then even William. If you're considering as well, I mean, coming from New York, it makes more sense to actually fly probably from New York instead of come out here and then fly with. So, um, we will we can give you guys the exact flight and tell you when we are planning to be at the hotel. And then uh, the, the tour guide, Rajahi, would really like you to be as close to that time as possible, getting there so we can then convene and be all together. And then you're not hurting cats too much. So we can give you guys that, that information. Okay. I'm sorry if this question's already been asked, but are there acceptable payment methods? Um, can, are all payment methods accepted, like cash, check, cash? Cash. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Allison, Nina and I were just talking about that, at least for the deposits, oh, and, and maybe for the for the balance of things, uh, it probably makes sense just to go ahead and, and make that out to the effect, but specifically for the trip. And then we can send one check to Ajayi um, rather than trying to, to send everybody's scattered payments. And so uh, in, in that respect, yes, we, you know, the effect can take um, check or cash. And maybe actually, I guess we can't take credit card, but we can take check or, or cash. Or, or to Zelle it. We it's could good. Zelle it. I don't actually have, mm -hmm. well, we to the could. Effect? We, the effect doesn't actually have a Zelle account. Oh. We uh, we have PayPal though. You could PayPal us. Really? I, I, I yeah. don't remember how. Okay. Yeah. So there's no way to use a credit card for the balance. I, I'm sorry, Jerry. We can't use a credit card for the balance. I, I'm sure we could. But oh, we could okay. we could probably do that through Living Stones through um, his his organization because he obviously does. I'm sorry, okay. Miriam. What did you say? Let's confirm that Nina on the credit card piece. Because I'm not 100% sure how that would work. Yeah, Miriam was just asking if we can use credit cards in Israel in American dollars. And yes, I believe we can. But that's yeah. a, that's another Rajai question, unless you guys already know. I believe well, we. Um, he told us before that we can use credit cards. Um, 
they uh he did say also like with tipping they actually accept american cash for tips and they're mm -hmm. used to that from tourists so we don't have to do any uh money changing before we go no you don't have to no you don't have to i mean but you might want to you may want to you Sorry. may want to have a little bit you, you could either do it there or you could do it before you go you know just have we a little just... bit in your pocket find out what the exchange rate is uh, I'm sorry, was that with Ryan trying then? to chime in there? Yeah, we just um, got back from Cabo. And one of the things that we realized that we didn't beforehand is every time you pay in U.S. dollars, you pay a, a, a currency can, uh, exchange fee. Mm -hmm. They charge you extra. But whereas, not whereas if you get it out and we would have gotten pesos out, we wouldn't have been charged that uh, currency exchange fee every time we paid. So, like, if you go to a store and you want to buy something or something that's not included in the trip, they, they some places, I don't know about Israel, sometimes they'll tack on, even if you're paying with cash, they'll tack on a little extra because you're paying an American dollar and they have to go exchange it. Right. Mm -hmm. The rate's going to change by next year. Possible. Also, I was looking at my, my credit cards. So, a couple of mine has a 3% transaction foreign fee. So I'm gonna apply for Capital One. It says no foreign transaction fee. What card is that, Ellen? Capital One. Oh. Uh, quick question. So Dave uh, and uh, Kathy, is the are the logistics being coordinated by? And I'm sorry, if you remind me the individual's name. Uh, Rajahi. He's with Livingstone's Tour Company. Oh, okay. So yes. he's the one that's handling all of the logistics. Right. That is correct. Okay. Yeah, so, he, so he's going to handle all of the transportation for us. You know, the oh, airlines. Tick any ticketing. Ticketing, or, um, or... hotels. So when we get closer, closer uh -huh. to our, our, tra our travel date, the, he's going to ask for a room list of who's going to room with who and what couples and you know, who uh -huh. needs a single room, who needs a double room, all those things. And then he coordinates all of that for us. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention, and if you haven't had a chance, um, I think we we put it on one of the spreadsheets, the Livingstones um, website. Go on their website and just you know snoop around a little bit. It's very interesting. And there's a section called Travel Tips and Answers, and it's got a lot of stuff there about how, what are the buses like and what kind of weather it could it be, and you know what should we prepare for, and how does money work and. <sighs> Um, what kind of do we need adapters? Um, the, one of the things that's important for everybody here, I'm sure if you've traveled internationally, uh, if everybody doesn't have an active uh, passport, you will need one that's active for at least six months beyond the date of our departure. So that has to be, that's something to think about. You've got a little less than a year now. So if you need to get some extension going, this is the time to do it because I think it's taking anywhere from six to 10 weeks on average, probably to get a passport extended or if you have to get a new one. So something to think about. And are they all hotel rooms or are you staying at kibbutz at all? They're all hotels. Four star. Yeah. And we believe that they were four star hotels. Yeah, they're, you know, they're good hotels. And, and Rajahi explained a little bit to us about that, that they're not fancy. I think they're, they could be a little bit more on the, you know, simple and austere side, because really you're spending very little time in the hotel room. They're all air conditioned. They have all the modern things that we're used to um, and such. So we've got just a, they're good hotels. They have good ratings and he's going to want to get the, you know, the best rates for those as well. So, um, but they're not going to be like, you know, five star, you know, fancy, fancy, dancy ones. It's going to be, you know, good for sleeping and showers and, you know, getting up in the morning and they're safe places. He knows all the neighborhoods and everything. So and there's really only two hotels that we're staying at. So the first one That's is right. in Nazareth and we'll be staying there for the first half. And then we move to Jerusalem and we'll be staying in a hotel there for the second half. So it'll just be the two hotels. That's right. That's nice. Marion just looked it up. It, it, they're they're saying it's about thirteen weeks now for uh, passport renewal, um, so so it's a little bit longer. So yeah, if you need a passport, um, that it, as Kathy said, that it has to be good for at least six month months past the date of entry. Um, right. Then uh, do it now. Dude, this is the time to do it. So, 
Yeah. And let's see, what else were we, what, um, what other questions jumped out at you guys when you were thinking about when you- Oh, looked... a minor point when I was in Israel last time, um, one of the hotels, I think it was when we were in Jerusalem, they, um, they're very stingy with the internet and they do a lot of upcharging unless you agree to go on TripAdvisor and give them a good rating, believe it or not. And uh, anyway, it's it's probably in the noise as far as everything else is concerned, but um, just be aware that um, there's some games that are played, um, yeah. that kind of thing. So you like, you have a phone and then your spouse has a phone. Well, that's, that could be extra or your iPad, it would be extra or anything would be extra. So no big deal. Just be, just be prepared for it. We don't need no stinking internet. We're in the Holy Land. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> they do, you're they needed. do say that the hotels have Wi-Fi, but you're right, Doug. I mean, depending on where you are in the world, probably Wi-Fi is better than some well, better it's, than it's a money-making um, opportunity or a way to boost the ratings. Uh, Local call there, right? <laughs> but so. I remember in one of the uh, worksheet, it says the tour buses have Wi-Fi. Is that it? Okay. Oh, then there you go. They've said they've said that. So yeah, I, I don't know how good it is, but oh yeah, that's true. It's a hot spot. No Wi-Fi. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, that's a deal breaker right for somebody right who said that. <laughs> one one thing. Can we get the Wi-Fi with our data plans through our our own internet or our our own data phone companies yeah. for international travel? If they have it. A lot of them don't, though, so you do, you do have to check and make sure that it will go international. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them will. Like so it's yeah. uh, it'd yeah. be kind of cool if we could somehow stay in a kibbutz down when we're in the like down by the Dead Sea. That would be fun, but who knows? Mm -hmm. I'm just talking out loud. <laughs> Ignore me now. Thanks. We can get into that, like if you want to use special cards for your phones and. All that yeah. stuff. But that's way down the yeah. road. And and I think, we, yeah. I don't recall what Rajai said about adapters. Do you? I know we spoke about it. Yeah. He told us and it's it's actually in our um let's see. So the so the current in Israel is 220 volts. And they say he says most Israel sockets are three prong, but the um, most accept the European two prong. But if your appliance does not work on 220, you need an adapter. So, I, you know, might be worth just having nice. one nice. in case if you want to charge your phone and, and it all else, you know, it might be easier just to have one. And you're you yeah, an electrician for hire on the trip. So, yeah, Mike, <laughs> Mike will there. build us an adapter. Oh, my gosh. That's in flight. That? Oh, boy. <laughs> um. Marion just brought up that that the that that basic room price is for double occupancy. So yes. if you're going by yourself, you're going to need a roommate. Yeah. So Much do you notice that? So, so mm -hmm. when you, if you looked at the um, the cost sheet, there was a section at the top that said if you want a single room to yourself, you're you're adding on an additional. Uh, let's see, it's additional thirteen hundred and sixty five dollars for the tour trip. So it's like a little a little extra. It's like another $1,300 if you want a single room. So most of the rooms will be for couples or for two people sharing a room. And then if you want a single room, you just have to upcharge of the $1,300 added to your tour. So will you guys keep track of who's looking for a roommate? Yes. Like I will be a single looking for a roommate, probably. Yes. So we'll, that's what we'll do when we get closer. We'll go through the, the rooming list and then we'll get everybody's agreement on the rooming list. And then that's what we'll send to Rajahi and that's how he will get the, the mm -hmm. rooms booked for us. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And many of the meals are covered in the tour as well as the transportation and everything else. So that's all great. And we did get one question that came in to us um, about if we wanted to experience local food fair instead of just eating a lot of the meals at the hotels, which, you know, still is, is, that's part of the deal as well. So most of the dinners will be at the hotels, but when we're out at, uh, during the day on our tours, the lunches will often be at restaurants that are local, wherever we are. 
So if somebody wants more than that and they want to maybe take a group and say, we'd like to go out to dinner on our own, you know, we're going we're gonna to go downtown and make a reservation at this restaurant. You can do that. It's just at an extra cost to yourself. And you just need to understand that it's just not covered in the tour. So that's a side thing. About being with my room. And what else, what other questions do we get? Um, Kathy, do you want to go over any of the questions that Judy sent us, or have we more or less addressed them at this point? That was one of the ones that Judy sent. And I think there was another one about that that uh, Judy was interested, Judy and Jim were interested in the um what is it called? The hot springs in Tiberius? Is that it? Tiberius, yes. Tiberius, right. And so I think Rajahi talked to us and said that that really would make the tour a little bit different and it would take like a whole day out of the tour to go and do something like that, which typically the locals do is what he explained to us, right? So in, in, in lieu of that, um, you know, we are going to be visiting the Dead Sea. So if that's something that somebody wants to put their toes in or swim in, that would be the next yeah. best thing. And again, we saw this beautiful picture from today about the Dead Sea and, and the gorgeous but landscape of that. So we may not be able to go to the hot springs because it would take a whole day out of the tour to go and do that. And I think Dave, that's that would kind of alter the tour a little bit too much from what you guys discussed, oh, yeah. right? What's the weather going to be like? What season are they going to be in? They're the same season as us and basically the same oh, okay. latitude as well. So oh, okay. um, Israel is a lot like Southern California, so it should be um, pretty temperate at this time of year. One of the reasons we picked the spring, you know. Yeah, we heard that it May is very good, early May. And I think um, I think I looked up on my weather app about a month ago and I was sharing with Nina. It was in the 80s, you know, it was in the 70s and 80s. So it will be, it could be warm, but it's not going to be nearly as warm as it would be in July or August. Nice. So, um, and and they have told us that we probably would, should be prepared to walk upwards of about three miles a day. So you want some good walking sandals or walking shoes, you know, things like that. Um, it's not going to be all at one time. Obviously, we're going to have breaks and sitting down and, you know, having meals and things. But that is kind of the extent. There is a lot of walking on the tour. So mm -hmm. we just need to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. Allison is smiling, so she must be happy about that. <laughs> so, well. Yes. And um, another point, oh, I'll just mention this one we'll real quick, Kathy. There's no necessary immunizations at all for entering the country. Um, so that's nice to know as well. Yeah, the only thing on their website that says that if you were recently have come from, say, Africa or some other continent within the last six months, you might have to look at some sort of immunizations. But I don't think that pertains to anybody in our group that, that I'm aware of. So, but no other immunizations there. They've lifted their COVID restrictions at this time. So they don't, it's not like you have to show vaccination status when entering the country. I think they did have that for a period of time, but they don't have it anymore. That's what Rajahi told us. So um, I'm trying to think of there's uh, some other stuff. Um, one of the things I did want to mention, and I put it on the spreadsheet too, is just a little side thing. Um, people may want to consider travel insurance. Um, you know, medical coverage is probably limited over there. They're not going to be, they don't necessarily honor Medicare, things like that in other countries, um, unless you have some sort of special Medicare program, I think. But um, if you want to have the secure feeling of, you know, if I have a medical issue while I'm traveling, if I have to be transported home, if I have to cancel my trip because of a family emergency and I'm going to lose my flight, you know, and all those kinds of things that I prepaid for lost luggage, all kinds of things there. It really probably makes sense for you to consider looking up some of the travel insurance info that's out there and then um, purchase a policy on your own. And that would be a separate cost outside of this. And one of the things I've done is, and Dave, I can forward this to you later, but um, I found a couple of links that have two articles that have got like a whole bunch of top, you know, insurance companies that you might want to consider. So we could send that out for people to do their own research and kind of pick the features that are important to them. And I think it's usually a couple hundred dollars at the most, maybe per person, depending on what you're looking for. So exactly. it's something to consider. Yes. You want to, if you don't think it's and, nice. and what's really nice is that we're it's able that. to, because we are planning 
a, a year ahead is when we began our our conversations on May 4th, actually, we're really able to talk about all these kinds of details that really can make the trip a wonderful success for everyone. Like the travel insurance, because you, you never know what's going to happen, but that's a good suggestion. And Kathy also has come across a couple of um, YouTube videos that she has found extremely helpful and informative and interesting. So um, she'll be sharing that with our I'll group share as, that well. as well with, with Dave and maybe Dave, you could just forward that out to the email list that you have, but it's just some interesting stuff about things, you know, about the country, a little background history, some customs, kind of some things maybe not to do things that, you know, you want to do things like that. And it's just interesting information. So it might be fun to take a peruse through some of those before you go over if you don't have a lot of I didn't really have a lot of knowledge about the country of, of Israel other than just what you hear on the news, but, and some of my family members that live there, but again, it's, um, it's interesting stuff. So we'll pass that out for everybody to, to review. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, one question would be, um, from time to time, things get a little crazy in Israel, just like they do all around the world. So I don't know. I think you just go and trust everybody that's setting this thing up. When I went years ago, there was some tension, uh, but they went ahead with the trip and they were, generally speaking, it, it, it went well. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are, you know, there is that tension always between the Palestinians and um, Israel and it, it kind of goes up and down as you know, you just don't know what it's going to be like when you're there, but I'm yeah. sure it'll be okay. Yeah, We're just... well, and that's something that we did bring up to Rajahi early on, Doug, too. We asked about that. He was, how do we determine our safety and things like that? And and he said, you know, a lot of what we hear in the news is very isolated. And there are people that are living their lives day to day with, with no issues. And he says they have a contact with the Israeli armed forces and they they stay tuned and listen to that. And if there are issues, he said they will modify the tour in a New York second and they can change and remove us from any kind of um, risk issue. So they know how to do that. That's one of the things that you'll see on the videos is that you have to be prepared to see armed soldiers everywhere all around Israel. It's very oh, common yeah. because they all join the army and they carry weapons with them. This is very unusual that we're not used to that necessarily, but it's something that we'd have to get used to. You know, they don't recommend people going off into nature and hiking because there are, could be landmines. You want to stay with your, you know, your tour people that know what they're doing. And these people are very well versed and they know the history of what they're showing us and telling yeah. us too. So Good I answer. That's, that's kind of what I expected. It, exactly. I was just wondering how that was uh, being managed, but you know, everybody thinks you can't walk around Southern California because they hear something about LA, but um I mean, it, it's a lot safer than people understand it to be. But Kathy, I don't know if you'll know the answer to this, but with regards to travel insurance, what part do they play in case there's any kind of military action when we are scheduled to go over there if we have to cancel? Do you know if they cover that? You know, I don't know. And that's probably something that you have to look at in the policies that you uh, engage in. And, you know, obviously they tell you to read the fine print on all those things. And you can read reviews about some of the, the insurance companies that some are better at paying out than others and so forth. So you have to kind of see what they cover when it comes to acts of God or you know, weather issues or maybe, you know, war issues, war related issues. So you have to look at that. So I think they all might be a little bit different. So Thanks, I'm, not really, I'm not an expert on that, but. And of course, some, one of the good news is that that uh, the big payments are going to come later on in the process. So we'll be able to monitor what's going on over there. I mean, obviously, we're not going to go if it doesn't seem safe, um, but uh, but we'll just be watching that and, and we'll see. But generally speaking, yeah, it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. So you suggest to buy the travel insurance, what, like a week? I, I don't know. When do we buy the travel insurance? Um, I think you probably need to connect with the insurance companies and find mm -hmm. out when they would want their payments for that. Um, so they they probably have a request of when the, when you need to sign up for that, like how soon in advance and that kind of thing. So yeah, we'll send out those articles so you can kind of peruse that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So one of the questions that Judy had was, what the heck is Megiddo and why would we go there? <clears throat> and um, so I, I don't know if all of you, I know that uh, Jerry didn't. Did most of you get a chance to look through the itinerary? Do you have any questions about the itinerary? Would you Would you like to talk through it at all tonight? What are your thoughts there? I think if we can go through, not give a detailed explanation on every site, but maybe touch on each location and why we're choosing okay. that, and it might be nice if it's not okay. Okay, take too long for people. Well, well, just just generally speaking, and if you read the itinerary, you know, I'm not going to hit everything, but just just to give you a, just a thirty thousand foot view, we're gonna we're gonna fly into Tel Aviv and then immediately bus to Nazareth and get settled in the hotel that we're going to be at for the first half of the of the nine days that we'll be on the ground over there. Because we, we've got 11 days total, and I think the, the first and last are travel days. And so from there, uh, the next day from Nazareth, we're going to head to the coast, and we're going to go out to um, Caesarea, and uh, which is a modern port city, but we'll be visiting the ruins there of the ancient... Uh, city that was there at the time of Jesus. And then we're going to go north up the coast, and that's going to include uh, uh, Haifa and the Baha'i Gardens, and there'll be a cut through to Megiddo. What is Megiddo? Megiddo is the, the valley that um, figures in the Old Testament and is predicted to be the site of Armageddon uh, in, the, in Revelation. And so it's a it's a beautiful vista point that, that will look out over the valley and the horns of Megiddo, these these two outcroppings on either side of it. And so it figures very uh, prominently in uh, end times uh, prophecy. The Baha'i Gardens are there because they're uh, an, uh, they're supposed to be just an absolutely exquisitely beautiful spot. They don't have any uh, biblical uh, significance, but you don't want to miss them if you're going right past there anyway. And then uh, we would cut back and come back to uh, Nazareth for the night. And then a lot of time will be spent in, in uh, this is all in Galilee, by the way, but we will be spending some time at the Sea of Galilee. And that's where Tiberias is on the western shore of Galilee. There is a boat trip planned from Tiberias to uh, the north, probably around Capernaum. We'll be able to see ruins at Capernaum. And just spend some time uh, in the in the lake region. And then from there, we would go south to the Jordan Rift Valley and see the Jordan River and um, Jericho, which is along those lines as well. And then somewhere along those lines, we're going to switch hotels and then move down south into Judea and, and move into a hotel in the Jerusalem area or Jerusalem proper. And then from there, and that, that uh, kind of point of operations will go out into the Negev Desert into uh, see Masada, which was the ancient fortress built by uh, Herod the Great and destroyed by the Romans in the first Jewish-Roman War. And then, then cut across to the Dead Sea and spend uh, the rest of the day at the Dead Sea. There will be, there's a cable car that goes up to the top because you don't want to try to walk that thing. Um, the, the Romans spent uh, almost three years building ramparts up to the top of Masada to finally take the fortress because it, it was impregnable otherwise. Uh, but there's a cable car that will take us up. And then uh, time at the Dead Sea. And that's where you can spend some time if you want to swim and, and feel the, the buoyancy of the water and all that at the Dead Sea. You'll have an opportunity to do that. And then uh, three full days in Jerusalem, two days in the Old City. So we'll be able to see the, the, the Temple Mount and the El Aqsa Mosque, the Dome of the Rock, and um, and then the, of course the Western Wall, the Wailing Wall. We'll travel the Via Dolorosa, which is the traditional path that Jesus took uh, as he was carrying the cross to Golgotha and the crucifixion. Uh, there is the Tomb of the Holy Sepulchre, where it's believed that that he was entombed. And of course, there are churches over all these sites. We'll be seeing Bethlehem, and of course, we're in Nazareth anyway, and so there are, there are tours to see. Um, the traditional sites in both of those locations. And um, we'll spend time in the old city, of course, get time to be able to just see some of the uh, open air markets and the bazaars and the other things that are going on in the old city and, uh, and all of the sites along the Via Dolorosa as well. And then the third day we go out to um, the Mount of Olives and the Garden of Gethsemane 
where there are still 2,000 year old olive trees standing in, in Gethsemane. So trees that uh, Jesus could have looked at himself, it's possible. And uh, so all of those areas. So basically when you think about it, it's going to be time spent at the coast, up and down the coast, uh, and then Galilee and the, and the Sea of Galilee it's itself, and then Jordan River and Jericho, Masada, Dead Sea, and Jerusalem. So those are gonna be the main points of interest. And that really encapsulates most of the activity of the uh, of the New Testament and the Gospels, uh, Dave. So you're do you can are you able to hike Masada? Will we have time so we can actually do the hike on Masada? No, I don't think so. I think we're going to uh, take the cable car up. I, I think it's like a half a day that we're spending at Masada, and then the other half uh, at the Dead Sea, as I recall the itinerary. Dave, are, are we? Are you going to bring your own shof shofar? Are you going to be <laughs> I'm curious? I, I wasn't planning on it, but I've got a couple of them. <laughs> but I've got a request. Uh, what? You want you want to want to play the shofar? No, I want you to play it. Oh, okay. I have to brush up my my trumpet embouchure for that one. Or you could yodel from up there. <laughs> so those who've been there before, the street vendors, do they take U.S. dollars, like small amounts? Do you bargain? I mean, what what happens with the street vendors? Doug, are you still online? Um, Doug Fanny? No. He's he has muted. He's on yeah, I'm here. Uh -huh. Did you hear the question from Ellen, Doug? Yeah. Yes. Um, I can't remember back if the the current. Okay. Hang on, that's my dog. Carter. Um, okay. they, um, you definitely would bargain. Mm -hmm. That's almost expected, and sure, that's part of the you know experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I just can't remember what the currency was, but I'm sure we'll figure that out when we mm -hmm. get close. Oh, so, meaning they don't use U.S. dollars. You didn't, the, I can't remember oh. if they. I can't remember at this point what currency we used. Jill, but, uh, I'm uh, sure uh, that'll be made clear to us. Everybody takes dollars. It's yeah, dollar. many they countries probably, uh, they prefer U.S. dollars actually because it's. More and they will try to take advantage of you for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the yeah, the street vendors will be very much higher. Yeah, they'll be hunting down the the tourists and stuff. Yeah, and they're, they're, they're they're like, there's some that's the, part of the experience. Several of the yeah, videos. Two dogs, uh, there, by the way, yeah. in the background. So the videos say that they expect that you will haggle with them. Yeah. So you yes. can, get your haggling experience. Yeah. And you're yeah they will. They will definitely be higher, and you got to bring them down. And right. exactly yeah. how much is they're better at haggling than you are? But you know. But see the 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 disadvantage we have we look like you as tourists, you see, right? <laughs> I didn't know if you would. But we're they'll, really they'll be able pilgrims. to spot us, I'm sure, Ellen. Huh? <laughs> they'll be able to spot us, I'm sure. Right, I know, right? But she's we're all getting off a bus or something, right? <laughs> you will be very amazed when they go to your, the Sabbath of um completely. People it's won't it's even it's be able cutting to cutting out, Doug. Can you start it again? Cutting oh, out. I'm sorry. I don't know why. Okay. Forget it. I guess oh, you don't have good Wi-Fi here either, Doug, huh? I guess <laughs> not. I don't know why the Wi-Fi. It should be good, but okay. I won't push it. We hear you now. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, I was going to say is it's amazing when you're there how on the Sabbath everything shuts down to the point where, you know, the elevators have to open up on their own and everything. Likewise, um, with the Palestinians and, you know, their, their um, times of worship, uh, you just see everybody going to their, um, I guess, I don't know, maybe I don't call it temple, but wherever they go, um, they Mosque. all go, everybody goes. Mm -hmm. So it's very uh, different than the U.S. Mm -hmm. in that respect. How long yeah, ago were you there, Doug? Have the rest oh my of gosh, it was at least uh you have the rest of that salmon if you want it. At least ten years ago. Okay. Or more. Now it has weight. There was some tension going on at the time. I got a uh some a Palestinian kind of pushed me a little bit when we were on the Temple Mound. 
And uh, when he pushed me, I didn't really get a lot, you allow him to be, I just didn't really move when he pushed me. And he then he got mad and made a big scene. So it was uh, interesting. But that, that that was just when there was a little flare up going on. You could just tell there was a little bit of tension, but it wasn't that bad. All right, so everybody just stay away from Doug on the Temple Mount, okay? Yeah, <laughs> but don't call it the Temple Mount. They don't like you to call it the Temple Mount because to them it's not the Temple Mount. Where the Dome of the Rock is and all that. So. It's the El Aqsa Mosque. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there there are some interesting things in the videos about you know just being sensitive around political discussions there mm -hmm. because they just are things can be misconstrued and you know misunderstood and so there's just a lot of heightened sensitivity and and such so it's just interesting to to learn some of that kind of stuff yes for sure and i wanted to mention too on the very last day for those of us that are flying in the group together to and from on that last day uh we're going to take like a later night flight so we won't have a hotel stay that night. We're just going to kind of stretch out the day. And that's what those incidental costs are for, just for some extra meals and things to kind of hold us over so we don't have to pay a hotel fee. Now, that won't apply to you, Mary, maybe, and William, if you're on a different flight home. But we have to just, I'm just talking about for the group's purposes. Oh. Oh. So in terms of logistics, because we'll be spending time away from the hotels most of the day how are the uh, restrooms like like yeah. western public restrooms because in china you have to squat really <laughs> <laughs> so i had to do my Good squat question. don't know the answer to that one <laughs> <laughs> it's not china i know that ellen <laughs> ellen it's safe to say there will be restrooms okay <laughs> no because China, Philippines, you have to carry your own toilet paper. Yeah. Because it's not guaranteed it's there. So that's how I travel too. And I've taught yeah, my kids. It, it's travel. nothing like that. There's nothing no bad there. memories of toilets or anything that's no bad. Okay. Yeah. Out, so it must have been not an issue. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> it was an issue we would remember and we don't remember anything yeah, like yeah. that. <laughs> that's my traveling habits. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, one of the things we'll get, um, Rajahi uh, promises us, and we haven't seen it just yet, but he is going to send us a list when we, you know, we get closer and kind of tidied up here with our headcount and such. But he's going to send us a list of things to bring and things not to bring. So, you know, we all kind of want to bring the kitchen sink with us and things like that. Probably not necessary to bring certain things. And then there's certain things that you will want to bring. So he's got it kind of dialed in and down to a science. He'll send that to us so we can get that out to everybody. So you can be thinking about that, you know, when you're packing and such. So that is minor details. So I think the main thing that needs to happen tonight is that you get all the information and questions answered that you need to make your initial decision that you can put down a deposit. I mean, that's kind of the transaction that we're after tonight. So anything that you need to know that clears the way for you to go ahead and put your name on the on the list and okay, you know, here's the $150 that so we can start blocking out those airline seats. So if there are any other questions like that, um, that's what we, we want to get those answered tonight if we can. And then if if uh, you come up with anything else, then just you know. Text me, Kathy, Nina, and we'll get answers post haste. Uh, one thing Rajahi has been great about is just coming right back with us with answers. I mean, amazingly quick, sometimes in real time. So he's been very responsive that way. So we'll get answers to your questions quickly. Um, but this is this is what we're after right now. Just making sure that you feel comfortable enough with everything that you're hearing that it sounds like a go to you. I can add more to it. And Nina, when do we want that go answer for the airline ticket then, do we think? Uh, I think we were hoping by Friday, June 30th, okay. if we can, because then we can reserve. The, the issue is the seats may increase in price for um, the group. So the sooner we get that money to him, the better. And, and how will we get these checks to you if it's a Friday? I mean, it's not like we're going to see you 
on Sunday to give it to you. Any ideas? I mean, ma I can't mail it, but what what, what yeah. would you suggest? Uh, Probably be best Monday. If you could do well, um, should we pick Monday as the day? But isn't that uh, or um, there's a there's a mailbox in front of the effect that you can drop mail in for those who live close by if they want to drop right. a check off. And I check the mailbox daily. Mm -hmm. Or I might be upstairs and I could collect it. But anything that comes my way, I'll make sure it gets into Dave's hands. You know, I would no, say if, if, you know, I can kind of make an executive decision here on this. If you tell us that you're going and, and you're good for the deposit, if there is a cutoff date that we need to get the money, then we'll just front it on the effect side and get the money to Rajahi so he can just book the flights and then you can get us paid, you know, at your earliest convenience um, because you're all very trustworthy people. Yeah, I was thinking of the people that don't live nearby and mm -hmm. plus Sunday would have been easy. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I can run by and drop it off. But I know like Williams in New York and Danielle in Arizona and, you know, whatever. So that's what I was thinking is. Well, why don't we say this then, that if you can let us know this week that, that you want to put the deposit down, then we will count you on that list. And then we'll we'll get the money, you know, as soon as as reasonably possible. But we can yeah. get the check out to Rajahi so he can save that block of tickets. Yeah, and and let's keep in mind that like people like Mary and um, you know William and even Tony. I don't know if you would you know fly from a different place. You may not be part of our group ticket experience in terms of flying with us, but we would be good to get your go or no go just you know thought on whether you think you can join on the trip that's way we'll at least include your headcount when we start talking about rooming lists and things later so that would be good to know still if you're in or out even though you may not be flying on the group flight with us so but that's nice dave if you can we can do that everybody's word and front the money and then just get the money to you at some point right yeah because of the the tickets are the most sensitive issue right now and it is. uh We've got a pretty good rate. I what was it like thirteen hundred dollars round trip? Yeah, so it's a it, good rate. So you know, if if we keep dragging it out, that that number is only going to go up. So it it'd be is. nice to lock it in as quickly as possible. <laughs> Makes sense. I'm sorry. Wasn't there a second deposit too that needed to be done, or did I? Or wasn't there like there was a something about three hundred dollars right when we hopped on the call? So sorry. Yes. Yes. So, so that's the, that's the non-refundable deposit that basically says I'm going, I'm committing to going. And so that money will be following. We'll, we'll pick a date very shortly after the airline date and get the, that money for maybe we have to get that to Rajahi as well for the tour. So that, that $300 is for the ground portion of the tour as opposed to the flight. Correct. That's right. They're separate, but. So anybody that did finds out about this after the fact of Friday, um, then they would just have to make their own flight arrangements and, and meet us there, right? Okay. Yes. Possibly, I, I don't know, we're, we're gonna find out. I know Rajahi said that if, if, our, um, if our head count drops below 10, that we, we are in danger of losing the booking entirely, uh, the group booking. But it, it sounds like we've got some play here. So depending on the numbers, I mean, we're hoping that we at least have 25 to 30. Um, we've got 38, I think, on the initial list, even though we only have uh, 16, 17 here tonight. But um, so there may be some play. So depending on how things go, if someone were to come in a little later, there still may, may be a group seat for them if this thing mm -hmm. is expanding or contracting. But we'd need to check that out with Rajahi. You know, it's there. There, there's some... There, there are a little bit of gray area there that I'm not totally familiar with. And mm -hmm. then of course, uh, the same thing with the uh, with the ground portion. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, we want to leave it as open and have as many options as long as we can on this thing. Are there firm dates for the for the tour itself? Yes. And the, what are those dates? Um, May those, yeah, May 6th to May 17th. 17. 17. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, Anything else? I saw Danielle's face when Nina said 14 hour plane ride. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's not ideal for certainly, but <laughs> the only way to get there. Is that you're shaking? You're not coming with us, Danielle? I'm assessing how much how much drugs I'm going to need to make it there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have, they won't have to ground the plane. <laughs> we'll keep you calm, Danielle. We'll entertain well, and, you. And the, the, oh. the question did come up that, uh, you know, marijuana is uh legal in some states of the united states of course as we know and uh it can, you know sometimes it can be used as a, an anxiety reducing kind of uh med for people and how would that be received if someone is traveling with that so we have to find that question out from rajahi we don't want somebody going into a prison for 16 months right like, oh, Russia or anything else. Yeah. we have to find out how uh, open-minded they are about this kind of thing so we will so how are on they question. on the other side if somebody took it had it with them and they got got there is israel is it legal no. there i don't, I don't know, know. Uh, we don't know don't the answer because really really you question. should have to fly back <laughs> <laughs> right. hey, well ryan and allison will will fix us up something legal it is legal in Israel. I just don't know how legal it is to bring your own. Uh, However, is Israel is actually the leading um, uh, country in, for, cannabis research. for cannabis research. It's actually it's one of the most amazing doctors uh, wow. that led all the, the research is in Israel. So fun fact. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a good point, Allison. And you'll see on some of those videos, the fun facts also, there is some there's a heck of a lot of talent, uh, technical talent and uh, smart people in Israel. They have got some uh, companies there that uh, are, they've got some very talented people. So yeah, there's some smarts there. <laughs> so Allison, oh, she walked away. Do you know if it's legal in Israel? It, it is legal, but- Oh, we don't, it is. Oh. Yeah, but I don't know that you can bring it, bring your own goods. They're not so- so Ryan and I will I'll have luminate products with no, me. That no, no. <laughs> that deeper and Kathy said she'll ask the tour guide. Yeah. Yeah. We'll find out, Allison, if you can travel in and out with it or you have to get it there. So we'll find out. We'll ask that question. And and Allison, it, if not, we will promise to come and visit you if you do get incarcerated. <laughs> they know. They know. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Good one. Will that take away time from our trip? <laughs> Another <laughs> bus this tour. Is, this is called Israel 2.0. That's the follow-up. <laughs> <laughs> that's the follow-up. We should visit them. We go. <laughs> so um, what I'm thinking then, um, if people are interested, maybe in a couple more months, you know, we can have another um, uh, Zoom call for an hour and see if any more people have wanted to join and kind of see where things are moving along. And it will kind of, I think, also contribute to the cohesion of our group. And I think that'd be a, a really nice next step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we should have more of a firmer headcount, I think, yeah. too, Yeah. you know, as we get closer. So then the group will start to gel together anyway. So, yeah. That would be great. Good. Good. So. All right. So I will be sending an email out tomorrow with the the link for this recording. And then, Kathy, you said you had some materials you're going to send to me as well. So I, I can will. bundle it all together. Yep. We'll okay. So that. you'll get that email um, tomorrow. And it'll have a whole bunch more stuff. And then we'll be... What's the mechanism for... Uh, did you guys work out a mechanism for them... Everybody getting in touch with uh, a yes on the flight deposit? Should they text us, email us back? What should they do to let us know they're in? I'm getting blanks. You're, send, you're, you're sending the global emails out, Dave, but you're sending it in a disclosed, like an undisclosed list. So um, so if people were to respond to you, would that be easy? Or be is that yeah, you can respond to the email and let me know or just email me and let me know and then once we have the the count, hopefully by the end of the week, um, and then we we'll, may need to get in touch with some of the people who didn't make this meeting, or hopefully they would respond to us anyway. 
So great. So I think we just okay. got a one a one I'm in already by uh, -huh. uh yes. Megan. <laughs> I, I'm yeah. Yay, Meg. I yeah, mean, but just, I already yeah, have just... my hat. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I have my hat. Oh, that's a good question. Do we have to wear head coverings? Oh, we're in. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't know, but I I'm wearing a scarf so. anyway, just in I case, right? So. We'll, we'll find that out as a part yeah. of the list of what to bring and what not to bring. Okay. So no, we'll you have out. to wear it at the wall. Uh -huh. Oh, yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. well, that may very well be uh -huh. that there's some guidelines around some of the... Right. Yeah. Plus, a scarf is very easy to breathe. Yeah. 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 And Ellen, Thank I don't you. know if you meant it or not, but your hat is Israel blue. That's very good. Is that right? Oh, okay. Yes, I love this. <laughs> that's Sunday right. afternoon hat. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so I'll get the I'll get the email out to you. Respond to me. Um, you know, for, with uh, your intention for the for the airline deposit, we'll take a head count. We'll get the money to Rajai and get this road on the show. And we'll get some more answers to some of the questions that you had. And as we get more information, we'll we'll send that to you, Dave, and you can just kind of send out some bulleted answers so people will see what the question and answers were. Okay. Yes, and you can, can we... keep peppering us with questions along the way as they occur to you. And we can just go ahead and do PayPal if we have PayPal, right? PayPal works, yes. Okay. And, and just make sure you put on the memo that it's for the, the for department. For Israel, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good idea. Okay. Okay. Anything Great. else? Hey, this was good. One other thing Kathy brought up, and we can just float it here. She said, maybe uh, as we get a little closer, we could also have a kind of lunch and learn on a, on a Sunday after the Sunday service where we kind of get some lunch and we just kind of regather in the in the room at the effect for those of us who are local and uh, and we can just talk more face to face and and anything that's come up and and just kind of have a a little pre-trip gathering so if that sounds of interest yeah. we'll make sure that happens as well that sounds great yeah I think that's a great idea mm -hmm. cool yeah. Well, okay. thank you, Nina and Kathy and Dave and thank Mary you. back yeah. there in the corner for putting this together for us. We really, it's pretty cool. You know, this has been Exciting. something that that we have wanted to do <laughs> for thirty years, and yeah. uh, I was sort of thinking, well, maybe it's just gonna I'm gonna have to let this one go. <laughs> and it's so interesting the way this came about. It was just kind of a sideways suggestion, and it's it's gathered a head of steam, and the train is about ready to leave the station. So I am amazed and and really glad to see that this is finally going to happen and that we get to do this with all of you can't yeah. think of anyone better um than than our, our little community here at the effect That's what and uh, and and folks coming in like uh, mary and we'll see there's some other folks from outside our immediate community that are considering going with them so it's going to be great really looking yeah, forward to this i'm excited you'll be getting my paypal soon Woohoo! okay <laughs> And those of you that are not talking, we're going to be pressuring you on the side. <laughs> <laughs> right, little quiet William over there in the corner? Yeah, Mr. William. <laughs> Come on, William. Just kidding. Just mm -hmm. kidding. I saw a flight no for pressure. Two no pressure. From, from New York. What's that? I just saw a flight for 268 from New York. I don't know if that's... Whoa, see? Whoa. Wait, $268? Yeah, bank. I don't know if that's... Does that Mary, land somewhere in the Mediterranean trip? or something? <laughs> I think I might have to uh, parachute out. I think so. <laughs> hey, Bill. Hey, Bill, that's on the back of a pterodactyl, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I think it's going to be a busy tourist season because I have this from the Catholic. Um, well, it's a Catholic newspaper in Orange County. And there's a group that just came back from May 15 to May 28, Holy Land parishioners from the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. I think May is busy. Mm -hmm. Could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It could be a big year. Yeah. Well, then we'll be okay. in good company. Yeah. Okay. We've got yeah. each other. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Thanks. I think again. we did it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you Thank so you. much. We'll, we'll be you. seeing you soon. Good night. Good night. Good night, guys. Good night, everybody. See you soon. See you tomorrow night. Most of you. A lot of you. <laughs>